All right, so today we're diving into some pretty out there stuff, even for us. Yeah, this one's a doozy. Carlos Castaneda, sorcerers, altered states of reality, the whole shebang. Buckle up, everybody. Now, we're mainly using Castaneda's book, Tales of Power, as our guide for this deep dive. Right, good old Tales of Power. And just a heads up, we're going to be throwing around some unusual terms, but we'll make sure to break them down so everyone's on the same page. Absolutely. No need to be a philosophy PhD or, you know, a seasoned psychonaut. Exactly. So Castaneda kicks off Tales of Power with his experiences with this Yaki sorcerer, Don Juan Matas. Oh, yeah, Don Juan. Now there's a character. Their first encounter is actually a perfect example of how Castaneda's world starts to unravel. And it all starts with a moth. A moth. Well, not just any moth, mind you. Okay, you've got to tell me more. So picture this. Castaneda is with Don Juan in the desert, right? <laughs> and he sees this figure kind of lurking in the bushes. Okay, getting those spooky vibes already. He's totally freaked out. Thinks it's a person, maybe dangerous. Right. But then Don Juan calmly tells him, no, no, that's just an ally. An ally? What's that supposed to be? Yeah, so at this point, Castaneda's thinking, what is this guy talking about? I can imagine. Don Juan goes on to explain that this ally is actually a moth, but not your typical moth fluttering around a light bulb. Right, because that would make too much sense. Exactly. Don Juan describes these moths as like, Guardians of Eternity or something. Guardians of Eternity. <laughs> this is where it starts getting really out there. Oh, we're just getting started. He says these moths carry gold dust of knowledge on their wings. Gold dust of knowledge? What does that even mean? It's like, how do you explain the feeling of suddenly understanding something profound? Or that moment when you connect with a new idea that just blows your mind? That's the gold dust. Okay, I think I'm starting to get it. It's about those flashes of insight that can change your whole perspective, and then poof, they're gone. And these moths are supposed to represent that. In a way, yeah. It's like these moths embody those fleeting moments of knowledge, those glimpses into something bigger than ourselves. Wow. Okay. So Castaneda sees this moth, or at least that's what Don Juan tells him it is. And this is where things get really wild. Don Juan basically leads Castaneda through this experience in the dark, and the moth becomes super real for him. Real how? Like he actually sees it up close. Yeah, but it's more than that. It's like this moth becomes intertwined with Castaneda's fear and his whole perception of what's possible in that moment. So it's like his fear is feeding into how he's experiencing this moth. Exactly. Don Juan later explains that Castaneda was half looking, half seeing. Like his mind was trying to make sense of something unfamiliar and it filled in the blanks with his own fear and preconceived notions. So it's not just about what's actually there, but how our own minds shape what we perceive. Bingo. And that right there, that's a major theme in Castaneda's work. It's like how much of what we experience is actually real and how much is just our own minds playing tricks on us. That's the million dollar question, isn't it? And it's something that both Castaneda and his teacher, Don Juan, really push us to consider. It's definitely making me question a few things already. That's the spirit, and it's only going to get weirder from here. Just wait until we get to the part about the tonal and the nagual. Oh, I've heard those terms thrown around. It's all about different realms of reality, right? It's something like that. But we'll save that juicy stuff for after the break. So the tonal and the nagual, those sound like pretty heavy concepts. Yeah, they're basically like the cornerstones of Don Juan's whole system of knowledge. So how do they fit into this whole idea of expanding our perception, seeing beyond the everyday? Well, think of it this way. The tonal is everything you know, your name, your job, the government. The government, right. Your beliefs about the world, everything that we consider normal and everyday, that's the tonal. So it's like our comfort zone, our usual way of experiencing reality. Exactly. It's the world defined by our language, our culture, all those things that shape how we see things. Makes sense. So where does the Nagual come in? Ah, the Nagual, that's where it gets really interesting. The Nagual is the unknown, the mysterious, everything that lies beyond our normal perception. Beyond perception. Yeah. You mean like things we can't even imagine? Yeah, it's kind of like trying to describe a color you've never seen before. It's outside our realm of experience. Look, and I'm starting to see the challenge here. It's like. Imagine the tonal is an island, right? Everything you know, everything familiar, that's on the island. Okay, I like that analogy. And surrounding the island is this vast, endless ocean that's the Nagual. And that ocean, it's full of, what, like, magic and mystery. Well, Don Juan wouldn't use those words exactly. Fair enough. But it's full of possibilities that we can't even begin to grasp from our limited island-bound perspective. So how do we even start to explore that ocean, that Nagual? Do we need... 
Like a magical boat or something? Don Juan would probably say the boat is already within us. Okay, you're going to have to explain that one. He believed that we all have the potential to access the Nagual, to expand our awareness beyond the limitations of the tonal. But how? How do we actually do that? Well, he teaches Castaneda a whole bunch of techniques, and they're not for the faint of heart, let me tell you. Like, what? give me an example. One of the big ones is this idea of stopping the internal dialogue. Stopping the internal dialogue. You mean like not thinking? Not exactly not thinking, but more like silencing that constant chatter in our minds. You know, that inner voice that's always commenting on everything. Oh yeah, I know that voice all too well. Mine never seems to shut up. <laughs> right. Well, Don Juan believed that quieting that voice was key to opening up to other ways of perceiving the world. So it's like hitting the mute button on all the noise in our heads so we can actually tune into something deeper. Exactly. And it's not easy. It takes a lot of practice and discipline, but the potential rewards are huge. What kind of rewards are we talking about? Well, Castaneda describes having all these incredible experiences when he's able to silence that inner critic, vivid visions, a heightened awareness of his dreams. So it's like all these other realities open up when we get out of our own way. That's the general idea, and it ties into another important concept that Don Juan emphasizes, erasing personal history. Erasing personal history. Now that sounds even more intense than stopping your thoughts. I know, right? But it's not as literal as it sounds. Don Juan isn't saying you should forget who you are or where you came from. Okay, that's a relief. It's more about letting go of the grip that our past has on us, the stories we tell ourselves about who we are based on our experiences. So it's like our past experiences, they can become these filters that color how we see everything, even if we don't realize it. Exactly. And erasing personal history is about taking off those filters, becoming more present, more adaptable to the current moment. It's about challenging those stories we tell ourselves and becoming open to new possibilities. But how do you actually do that? It's not like you can just erase memories. Well, Don Juan has some pretty unorthodox methods. Oh, I bet he does. Yeah. This I've got to hear. For example, he encourages Castaneda to break his routines, do things that make him uncomfortable, shake things up a bit. It's like he's trying to disrupt Castaneda's sense of self, his usual way of operating. Exactly. Because when we disrupt those ingrained patterns, we create space for something new to emerge, something beyond our limited sense of self. That makes sense. So how does all of this tie into the sorcerer's explanation you mentioned earlier? Well, all these techniques, they're all about pushing Castaneda towards a direct experience of the Nagual, a way of perceiving reality that's beyond words and explanations. So it's not about understanding these concepts intellectually. It's about embodying them, experiencing them firsthand. Exactly. And that's where the real journey begins. So we left off with this idea of the sorcerer's explanation. But it's not like a simple answer, right? It's more about a direct experience. It's like, how do you explain the taste of a strawberry? You can describe it, sure, but until you've actually tasted it. Right, you don't really know. Exactly. And the sorcerer's explanation, it's like that, but a million times more intense and mind-blowing. Okay, now you've got me intrigued. So how does this whole experience actually unfold for Castaneda? Well, after all that training with silencing the internal dialogue and erasing personal history, Don Juan takes him and two other apprentices on this journey to the mountains. To the mountains, what are they gonna do there? Don Juan says they're going to a place of power, a place where the boundaries between the tonal and the Nagual are thinner. Okay, things are starting to get interesting. And it's there in this remote location that Don Juan and Don Gennaro reveal something truly remarkable. What is it? Don't leave me hanging. They reveal their allies. Allies. What, you mean like those mysterious forces we talked about earlier, the ones that can take different forms? Those are the ones, remember how Don Juan described those moths carrying gold dust of knowledge? Yeah, I thought that was just a metaphor. Well, it turns out those allies, they're not just metaphorical. Castaneda actually sees them attached to Don Juan's and Don Gennaro's belts. He sees them, like physically sees them. He describes them as these dark, shadowy figures. And as Don Juan and Don Gennaro detach these allies, they transform into these massive, swirling shapes, moving independently. Okay, now that's just wild. It sounds like something out of a dream or a hallucination. And that's the thing. Castaneda himself, he struggles to even describe what he's seeing. It's like mm. it defies language, defies our normal ways of understanding. It's like trying to fit the ocean into a teacup. Exactly. It's too vast, too overwhelming for our ordinary perception to grasp. But... Even though it's terrifying for Castaneda, it's also profoundly transformative. How so? 
Well, he describes his consciousness fragmenting, breaking down into all these pieces, each capable of perceiving independently. Wait, so it's like his sense of self just shatters. It's more like it dissolves, and in, in its place is this collection of awarenesses, each experiencing the world from a different angle. I can't even imagine what that would be like. It's like those altered states people talk about with psychedelics, only this is happening naturally. That's a good comparison. It's like Don Juan is guiding Castaneda to access these expanded states of awareness without the need for any substances. So is this the sorcerer's explanation then? This fragmented consciousness? This encounter with the allies? It's all part of it. But the real explanation, it comes later when Castaneda is alone, contemplating everything he's experienced. Okay, so what's the big reveal? What does Don Juan tell him? He says, and I'm paraphrasing here, the sorcerer's explanation is that there is no explanation. What? How does that make any sense? It's like he's saying, you can't grasp this with your mind. You can only experience it. It's about unfolding the wings of your own perception, seeing beyond the limitations of your everyday awareness. It's about expanding our capacity to see, to experience the world in its totality, not just through the lens of our limited human perspective. Yeah, you're getting it. And the amazing thing is, it's not just some abstract idea. Don Juan gives Castaneda actual techniques to explore these concepts, to experience the fluidity of reality for himself. So it's not just about what we know, but about how we see. It's about challenging our assumptions about what's real and what's possible. Exactly. And who knows, maybe by exploring these ideas, by questioning our own perceptions, we might just catch a glimpse of something truly extraordinary ourselves. This has been an incredible journey, exploring the world of Carlos Castaneda, sorcery, and the power of perception. It really makes you think twice about everything we take for granted. It certainly does, and who knows, maybe it'll even inspire some of our listeners to start questioning their own reality a little bit. If this deep dive into the world of Carlos Castaneda and the Sorcerer's Explanation piqued your interest, be sure to like and subscribe to Arcane Intelligence for more explorations into the mysteries of the unknown. Until next time.